Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. This is the second video of my two part series or three part series. I don't know how long it's going to take where I teach you guys how to make a crude application with React, Node.js and MySQL. So in the last video, we created our front end over here. It's really simple. We also started our Node.js and Express server and we left off by running Node1 in our application and just creating a simple Express application. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna configure our database. And for this, we're going to be using a, a program called MySQL Workbench. So there are different ways you can access your MySQL database. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to install MySQL into your, your computer. Uh, if you're in a Mac, I, will, I would recommend just searching on Google how to install MySQL. There you can use like Homebrew, which is how I installed that. And most Macs already come with MySQL installed, so that's not much of a problem. So there's three different ways you can access your MySQL databases. There's the terminal, which is probably the most used one. There's an, a program called SQL Pro, and there is a program called MySQL Workbench. MySQL Workbench is really easy to use. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use it, and you can literally cha make changes to your database. It's very intuitive, and we're going to be using this for this project. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create our database. So I've already logged into my uh, like my account and I'm on the local host uh, of my computer for our database. So I'm going to create here by right clicking on the left and clicking on create schema and we can give it a name. I'm going to call it crud uh, database, like crud database. That's a horrible name. Okay. Create crud database and I'm going to apply to it. You can see that it will automatically write the SQL statement to create the schema and click apply and it created the database and it's over here. So we're going to reach through this and you can see that there are zero tables in our database. So let's create one. You right click on tables and write create table. Let's write a name. So our database, our table in our case is basically going to be about movie reviews. So I'm going to call this movie reviews and we're going to give we're going to basically create different uh, columns to our database. The first one is the one that we we always use, which is the ID. It's going to be of data type int, and we're going to press the auto increment, meaning that whenever a new um, a new rows is added to our database or inserted into our database, uh, it's going to automatically increase this ID by one. And the next two things are the most important ones. We want the uh, movie name. And it's going to be a um, yeah. Let's 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 make it varchar and let's put like two hundred something like that. This is the, basically it's saying that it accepts uh, variables and characters and numbers as well. And the maximum length is two hundred. And we want to let me see unique. We want to not make it null, so you can't submit this information without putting a movie name. So you press here not null. And we're also going to add movie review. So movie review. This is basically going to be the place in our database where we want to write our review and we're going to make it text. The reason why is because uh, because we just want to uh, be able to take a lot of a lot of characters if someone wants to write a big review. So let, let's make this, I don't know, 500. I don't even know. Yeah, 500, whatever. So we also don't want to make this no. So this is our basically our our, and I'm also going to remove primary key. These are basically our database, our table. So we have an ID, a movie name, and a movie review. That's basically it. So we can click apply, and you can see that it creates automatically our SQL statement over here. And you can press apply, and it created our table. So if you go to tables, you can see that there's a table called movie review. And you can right click on here and press select rows limit a thousand. Oh, wait, I clicked the wrong thing. Select rows limit a thousand and it will basically show all the information that are that is currently in the database. There are no uh, rows in the database because we haven't added anything yet, but you can add it yourself if you want to, but we're not going to do this. We're going to add it through our program. So how do we access our MySQL database? We installed the MySQL dependency in our last um, in our last video you can see here. So let's access this over here. Let's call const mysql equals require and let's require the mysql dependency and to create our database to like call our database we need to create a variable called db which is database and write mysql 
dot create poll and an open and close parenthesis and an open and close um, uh, curly braces. And inside of here, you gotta write the information of the database. So basically, every database in MySQL have the following information: a host name, um, a user, a password, and a database name. So our host name is going to be localhost because this is this is the this is basically whatever you put initially, you know. And we need to make it a, a string. If you have doubts on what you need to put, because you've never created a host name or a username or a password, just put the following information. So localhost, then um, let's make user equal to root because it's the it's the default user. Let's make password equal to password again the default, and let's make um, database equal to whatever name we put over here. So we put crud database. So let's write exactly like that crud data base okay it should be working so we created a database we are accessing it and now we can make changes to our database whenever we want let's let's just make a simple request to our database and see if it's working you can see that currently whenever we get into our um, into the slash route of our application it just literally renders the word hello Pedro and let's make it for now so that whenever we do this, we insert random values into our database. So in order to make a, an SQL command or an insert statement into our database, we can write db.query. Uh, and inside of here, we can pass a string with a query and a function. So let's create the string, which is our SQL statement over here. So const SQL statement, like SQL insert, equals to um, insert into and we write the name of the table in our case if I recall it's called um, movie reviews so we need to write it exactly how it is there movie reviews insert into movie reviews and we need to pass whatever we want to insert so in our case we want to insert um, the movie name and the movie review so um, over here and uh, let's write values and basically values means that we're going to insert this the following values and it needs to be in order for uh, this information so we just want to install we just want to insert the following the following values so for now let's write um, a random movie name, Inception, and and let's wrap this around uh, parentheses. So Inception, and let's put the movie review. Good movie. Good movie. This is just so we can test it. So uh, we we can see that the database is working. So we just wrote an SQL statement saying insert into movie reviews uh, this tables the, oh this columns and we want to insert the values inception and good movie so if we go to the DB query we write SQL insert and here we can pass a function so in our case let's let's pass a rec and a res for the same reasons why we we do we did we inserted the the same things over here and actually since we already used rec and res let's let's use error which means like we want to catch an error if there's an error and let's write result. This will basically result will basically get whatever information we are trying to query if we're trying to query something. So yeah, in our case, let's um, just send the, the information to our front end. So this is basically what we're doing. We're querying the we're inserting the a movie review into our into our database. And we want to, whenever it inserts, we want to call a function which renders this into the front end. So let's refresh this and let's see if it works. Okay, it refreshed and let's see if everything was inserted. As you can see, it correctly inserted. So our first idea, our first row in our database has received the information of a movie name called Inception and a movie review called good, uh, saying good movie. So it means it's working. 
and it means that we're connected to our database. So let's erase this because we're not going to use this. It was just a test, but you can see that this is working, right? So what we need to do now is we need to basically go to our front end and make it a way so that we are um, basically getting our information whenever we write on the inputs and trying to make a post request to send that information into the database. So let's close everything we have from the backend and, and close the, the backend, the, the server folder, and let's open the client one. So let's go to SRC and app.js. You can see that currently we just have the two inputs and the button. So let's change that. Let's create a, a state. And the reason why we're creating the state is just so that we can get whatever we're writing in our inputs. So movie name and set movie name equal to use state and it's going to be a string. Okay. Um, if you don't really know how to do what I'm doing with React, I would recommend watching my series where I teach React JS from the beginning. I talk a lot about states, so if you're confused by that, uh, you can take a look on that. So review and set review. And it's also going to be an, uh, an empty string. And over here on each one of the inputs, we're going to uh, write it on change property on change. And I'm going to increase this in size. So on change and let's let's just pass a simple function which uh, sets the uh, the movie name equal to the event which we need to grab on the parameter. So e e dot target dot value. OK, this should work. We're basically setting our state whenever we make, we make changes to our input right here. And let's just copy this and do the same for the uh, the the move the review. So over here and change this to set review. Okay, it should be working. So use state is not defined. Oh yeah, we didn't import the use state hook. So let's come here and just write use state. Okay, and now let's also import the use effect because it's something we're going to be using. Okay. So now we're grabbing everything from our states and we want to install something called Axios. So in my tutorial series, I explain what Axios is, but basically, uh, and, we're, and we want to CD into our client first. So CD client, so that we're installing Axios on the front end. So Axios basically allows us to make API requests and we're going to be making an API, API request to our own API. That's why we're using Axios. So NPA, NPM I Axios. And while it's installing, let me import Axios. Import Axios from um, Axios. Okay, we imported Axios and now we can make the requests. So let me create a function that is going to be submit um, review. This is basically going to be a function that is going to be called whenever we press the submit button. So submit review and let's go to a button and write on click, on click. And whenever we click on this button, we want to call the submit review function. It should be working. And over here, what we basically want to do is we want to make an Axios request, a post request on Axios, sending whatever information we have currently for our movie name and our view into our backend. So let's write Axios dot post. And this is the URL that we want to, uh, this is the URL for our API. In our case, our API is basically this, right? Is the local host 3001. So we paste this here. However, there's a there's a problem. I don't want to make post requests using the, the slash route. I want to make a separate route just for the API. So if we go to our backend and I'm going to close the front end for now and I open the backend, I want to create different routes for our API. So app dot slash like when we when we go to the slash, it basically means nothing. I don't want to I don't want to do anything with the slash because we already have a front end running this. So basically, what I'm going to write is app the post, and whenever we try to reach the slash API route, so whenever we go to our backend and write slash API or make a request to this URL, I want to handle the following information. So slash API um, insert. Basically, whenever I call this this route, I want to insert information into my database, and I want to pass the rec, which is require, and the res, which is response, as I mentioned in my last video, 
And whenever I reach this, I want to make a, a query. So db.query that's going to be in inserting information into my database. So let me create a, an SQL statement like I did in the last time. So const SQL insert. And I'm going to basically say insert into movie reviews reviews and I want to pass the following I want to insert into the following column so movie name and movie review and I want to give the following values so basically if you want to sanitize or you don't want to directly insert a variable inside of your your database you can put two uh, uh, two how do I say this two question marks and pass a variable right here next to your query and you're going to understand why we're doing this but if i call sql insert and i put a a, a comma and i pass a, an array of two variables inside of here i can pass a variable called movie name and for now we don't have this variable but I'm, but we're going to get it right now so movie review and over here we can get the the function that we is the result of this query so error and result and let's pass um, a promise or let, let's do something if it if it's successful right so basically what this means is we don't want to insert a variable directly into our sql statement for various reasons especially security reasons so we can just pass it question marks and on the side over here we can go and write the the variables ourselves so in our case we don't have a we're not grabbing the movie name from the front end yes yet so we're, we want to do that in our case we can we can come to our front end so app.js and on the axis.post we can pass variables right here we can pass um, a, a pro, like a, an object which is going to contain two variables the first one is movie name and in our case we're passing the movie name so the state that we have over here and we also want to pass the review let's actually call it movie review because that's how we called it on the back end and let's pass the review so now whenever we make a post request to this url which we need we need to change because remember we, we on our back end we we called it slash api slash insert so we can come here and write slash api and slash insert we have to we can do something after this is inserted so let's after everything finished after we made the request let's create a promise and write dot then and uh, Let's pass a function, which basically is just going to alert in our screen or say like success, successful insert. This is just so we can see that it worked, right? So we're sending an object with a movie name and the movie review, and we want to grab that in the back end. So I, I, I remember when I installed Buddy Parser, that's a, a middleware which allows us to basically format everything uh, do everything related to uh, like the JSON format so I'm going to call it right now const buddy parser parser you don't really need to understand what it does or like uh, why we're writing the following statements but just know that whenever you're working with it most of the times if you're getting errors is because you don't have buddy parser installed so buddy parser and we want to come here and apply the middleware so app.use and buddy parser dot url encoded and believe me when i say this it's not that important to understand why <laughs> you need to do this just believe me that you should be writing this you should be applying this middleware whenever you're working with this kind of application so we have our, our middleware it working and what we need to do is we need to request the information that we got from the front end and we do this by coming here. And since we created a variable called, a parameter called rec, we can just use it to catch the names. So let's create a variable called movie name, name, and use rec dot body dot the name of the, of the, ob, like the, the variable that we're passing here. So movie name, you can come here and write movie name. And now let's write const uh, movie review and do the same thing equals rec dot body dot movie review right so now we have our two variables and we're passing them on our sql statement these are the variables that we we, we said that we we're going to create 
let's see if it works right so let me console log the results so whenever we, fin we, we make this query I want to see if it works right so let's go to our front end and it should be working let's see it, it, it might not work but let's see um, what is the name of a movie um, I don't know uh, Shawshank I don't even know if that's how you write it redemption and a movie review awesome let's click submit let's see if it works did it work um apparently from origin uh course policy okay i know what this means we need to install something called course and this happens sometimes i'm gonna install it so if we go to our backend and uh, let me go to our backend so cd cd server we need to install a dependency called npm install uh, course and this will allow us, allow us not to encounter this kind of errors so I'm going to call this up here const uh, course equals require course and let's come here and write app dot use course okay it should work for now let's try again it might not but let's see let's see if it will work okay it worked because you can see that it said undefined over here and let's see if it inserted into our database okay it didn't insert into our database let's actually console log the error um, let's refresh this and write whatever submit okay you can see that our backend is re receiving the error so column movie name cannot be null huh Okay, guys, I completely understood what the issue were, was. Basically, I didn't write here, I didn't apply the middleware app.use express.json. This didn't allow me to grab the information as a JSON from the front end, which uh, was basically making the request here from the, from the front end being null. So basically, when we, when we request from the body and the name of the variable we're requesting, uh, a variable that is going to be passed by the a the xuse.post over here and you need to pass it as a as an object so you pass everything that you want to pass from the front end to the back end so we pass two variables the variable movie name and the variable movie review and if we write the app.use express.json now we can grab this information from the front end to our back end by using rec.body.movie name and rec is the variable that we're passing on a parameter right here it basically means require so a request right so now this should be working i already tested it and it worked so if we come here to our back to our front end and we write the movie uh, i don't know smurf uh cool and we press submit you can see that what it says movie name cannot be but it just worked okay let me refresh this and i write here smurf did i save it? oh no i didn't save this okay smurf cool and I write submit, you can see that it's working. If we come here and we refresh this, it sent the information Smurf to our database and then we'll review cool. So it looks, it, it, it works. Uh, despite having that issue, it works. This is something that you guys will encounter multiple times. I don't know why I didn't remember. I always forget to write, to apply this middleware, but basically you need to do this if you're trying to request something from the front end as I'm doing right here. So what we're gonna do now is basically we're just gonna read create another another api like another api uh, route which we're gonna get the information so we're gonna get all the movie reviews that already exist so app.get and in this app when we whenever we call app.get we want to send to the front end uh, a, a json which basically will, will will contain all the movie reviews in our database so Whenever we write app API, wait, slash API slash get, which is different from slash API slash insert, we want to call the, the, the function with a rack and a res and the arrow function, which inside of here, we basically want to send all our information. So we want to make an SQL statement. Let's copy this because we're just going to reuse it. It's going to be SQL get or SQL select, which is basically the command that we're doing. And we run it right here um, select all from 
the name of the table, which is movie slash reviews. And basically, basically, if for those who don't understand SQL, this means that we want to select every information from our database, from our table called movie reviews. And if we pass the SQL select to our database query over here, and we remove this because we're not passing any variables, we just want to write this, and we call the error and the result. We want to for now console log a result. So let's see if it works. If I come here and I go to our slash API slash uh, get, let's see if everything in our database is going to be console logged into our backend. So press enter and you can see that now everything that we have in our database, our three movies uh, appear here, or four movies actually, because I think I accidentally sent, yeah, accidentally sent Smurf twice. So the only thing we need to do left is we want to send this information to our front end. And we do this by basically writing rest dot send and we want to send the th this is an array right so this is an array of all our information so we just want to send whatever we get from this and since we created a variable called result we want to send this so result and uh, you can see that site can be reached because we, we're just displaying everything in our back end so you can see all our information over here but if we go to our front end and we create another request so I'm gonna create a use effect because basically whenever you log into your application, it's just going to display everything over here. It's going to display all our movie reviews down here. So use effect and let's only call it once. So over here, let's make an Axios request. So axios.get and we want to pass the same URL. However, we want to change it to um, instead of API insert, we want to API get. And we don't need to pass any variables to it because we're just requesting everything, but we need to actually call a, a promise. So let's pass a variable here. Uh, this is going to be response, which is going to represent whatever we're sending over here. So whatever this is, is going to be contained through this variable. And uh, let's pass an arrow function and do something with that res response. So for now, let's just console log our response in the front end. So response. Let's come here and you can see that since this is a use effect, it's already it's already been called and you can see that it's already been console logged the object with all uh, like all of all our reviews in our database. It's an array of four elements. So and, and it's also in the in the property called data. So if we want to actually see the information, we need to write response.data and you can see that it will console log an array of all our information. So for now, let's just display a list with the names and the movie reviews really quick. So let's create a, a, a state called uh, movie reviews, movie review list and set movie, rev movie list, whatever use state it's basically going to be an array so empty array and we want to set this list equal to set movie movie list equal to um whatever we're getting from our api request so response uh dot data and if we come down here to our to our render function we just want to map through this list. So uh, movie review list dot map. And uh, let's create an arrow function. And let's grab two things from here. So let's grab the value. No, let's actually just grab the, the value, the, like the, the value from each uh, element in the list. So and let's return, return uh, an h1 tag for now, which is going to have the movie name. So the movie name is basically going to be the value dot um, movie name. Is that correct? Let's see how, how how the format is. It's basically basically an object with movie name equals to something. Yeah. So movie name, and let's like separate this. So movie review, and pass another variable called value dot movie review. Okay, this should be working. 
let's look at a front end and now it's basically listing every movie that we have in our database and this is really cool this is how we make all the connection between the front end and the back end i'm thinking that this video is basically like very long it's probably longer than what i want it to be but this is not like everything we're definitely going to have a third video i just wanted to make sure that you guys are in good hands before we go to the next videos so basically what we did in this video is we created our database we made the requests we basically changed our whole backend so that we're making a, a post and a get request in the next video we're going to be making the update and the delete and we're also going to be styling a bit so that it's not this ugly right so you can see that everything is working and if you have any doubts literally any doubts put a comment down below i'm going to be answering in like almost no time because i want to help you guys so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below, please like this video, and I see you guys next time.